Hello, everybody, and welcome to a very special episode of Unsealed and Revealed. What? Oh, are we clapping? No? Is it? You know, you'd think after doing enough episodes of this, they'd know to clap right away. Uh, I am your resident host, host, Jeff May, as you can tell, because I am in my residence. And I have with me, as always, our resident six scale enthusiast slash expert and all around high flyer to know, Guy Clender. Guy, how you doing, bud? I'm doing great, Jeff. It's wonderful to see you guys. It's been a it's great week. so good to see you too and of course we have our eye in the sky our amazing moderator cassidy over there on the ones and twos and she'll be taking your questions comments and concerns throughout all of the live channels cassidy how you doing i'm doing great living super good you sure are and might i say love the hair color looks thank fantastic. you let's stick with it for quite some time yes let's do it uh, i'm gonna do the same but it's just gonna be a nice pink hat <laughs> uh, today we have a doubly impressive show that's right we are looking at both the sith jet trooper six scale and the jet trooper six scale from hot toys now as you can see just like normal guy clender is back in the studio and he's feeling awesome right guy i feel wonderful excited you look to do wonderful. So that's good stuff. Now, we, of course, are continuing to practice social distancing and being safe. My man, Super Producer Sam, is behind the camera, more than six feet away, wearing a mask, and no one else is in the studio with Guy. Because, as always, we are doing our best to ensure the good health of ourselves and others, and we hope you do, too. You might also notice that I am wearing my sweet, sweet Sideshow New York Con shirt. I know we all had a blast over the past week, and we hope you did too. Uh, sound off in the chats if you got a chance to grab or pre-order any of the amazing items that we showed during the week, including this super exclusive shirt. I remember we had, it was a super tiny window to get them, and I love that. So if you got those, I definitely want to hear it in the chat. Um, now, if you missed any of the live shows that we did last week, um, just as a heads up, you absolutely can check out a lot of those reveal videos, exclusive interviews, booth tours, and so much more. And those are available on our YouTube channel. And you might be watching through that, but if not, I'm sure Cassidy is going to drop a link to the YouTube in the chats, uh, wherever you are. Now, that being said, Guy, I need you to take a look at these babies right here. I need to see them, Guy. Well, I am happy to show them off to you. Thank you. Here we are. Let's take a look at the overhead. This is our Sith Jet Trooper in that bright red um, that we see at the very end of the film. This is uh, the classic box work that we've been getting with the dark and then the darker almost uh, matte gray with the wrap around showing a few different photographs of the figure on the sides and then on the back some in-flight photos which is pretty nice right. as well oh, uh, now this is our shoe box style so we're going to lift this off <laughs> lift off which seems like a great idea for the jet troopers <laughs> And then a really nice close-up shot of the figure right there on our reveal sheet. Poof, like so. Um, now, inside, we're gonna take this out. The one piece I have already removed from it is the instruction sheet. It's a uh, smaller sheet. There's not a ton of the information uh, in there to tell you about with this one. Uh, but it does tell you what hands to use when trying to hold them. And then it uh, does have them done in little different letters. And so you can match those in with what you have uh, in your uh, box itself. So let's take a look at our overhead here. We have, wow, that is so bright, isn't it? Uh, and this is that real deep crimson red. I, I love that. Um, now our, our Sith Jet Trooper does have two different blasters, the two hands that are going to be on the figure, five additional, his dynamic stand, and then the base underneath. Let's take him out here. We're gonna set him on our turntable. There and take go. a look. Now, as I said, this is a bright and really fun crimson red uh, that you're getting on there. The helmet, quite different and quite unique. Uh, I really liked it. There's a lot of um, little details on this that that uh, have that flight suit uh, type thing, particularly on the back of uh, the boots and on the, yeah. the uh, hands there where it's got little airfoils uh, 
for his movements, so which I think are really neat. So let's let's give it a little spin, and then we're going to talk it down from head to toe. I like that. You know, I love, uh, I really do love the Jet Trooper design. It's one of my favorites. I was so stoked to see them uh, when they arrive it's in the Rise of Skywalker. When you show it, you're like, oh, I've been waiting to see something like this for a while. Yes. And so to see you break that out, it really is kind of great. Yeah, I think even the the line of dialogue they throw in there with the, uh, let's, let's you know that there was excitement yeah. uh, now, for this. First thing that I want to discuss, Guy, um, because I have a feeling that people are going to want to know, because what I see on my screen is a very sort of like an orangish red. Correct. And I think that's probably because of the lighting. I would like you like it described the red to me because yes, that, I is, an orange. Um, that is the lighting. Indeed, Jeff, you are correct in that um, this is that bright crimson red. If you saw when we did the uh, traditional Sith Trooper, you've seen kind of that bright red that we have in the Star Wars galaxy, um, that it does have that very bright, almost a hot rod uh, red, uh, which is great for guys that are flying through the air to have that kind of hot rod uh, type look. But it is a very, um, very bright red, not uh, not maroon, not orange, um, but a straight down the middle bright red. Mm -hmm. um, we have there on the chest plate, I like the little flight logo there um you know it's is that's a font that i'm not familiar with in the star wars world um jeff if you are if if i were to guess guy mm -hmm. and, and I, I, this would be just be an educated guess this is not information that i actually have researched on this because i didn't know about this i would say that it's probably the sith uh language lettering well there you guess. go i just thought it was his name uh, or no, uh, <laughs> it, it could be, it, it could be, um, now let's spin it around. Cause, uh, Sam's got a great shot on the, uh, midsection there. There's again, that three triangle yellow logo, uh, that we have on the back of the pack. Um, yeah. and the large exhausts, uh, and propulsion, uh, units there on the side. Um, now these are not a movable, they're not a swivel, uh, kind of thing. Uh, it's just to, to tell anybody yeah. that may wonder, oh, can I swivel them? Uh, they're not like a Boba Fett jetpack uh, swivel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The the paint scheme on them does have that, uh, that uh, the way that metal changes after it heats and cools and heats and cools a number of times and you get that um, kind of look on there. And so that is done on both of the, the jets there with almost a soot like um, flatter black quality right there in the vents. Mm -hmm. um, I do like that. The the way the, the, the black and the red pop is pretty fantastic. That, it that is. Glossy candy apple red mm -hmm. versus that matte black of the sort of um, the under clothing. Yeah, this is a candy apple red. Um, now, what uh, there's another, I mean, it's the, it's the little distinctions on this type of suit um, that I think are quite unique. Like, let's take a look at in the back here. Uh, we're used to that being kind of the round uh, cylindrical yeah. piece. And now it's triangular in shape and has the striations up on the top of it. It's not, just another fun kind of... Uh, I like I like the striations on those pieces a lot. I really like adding that sort of slight form of the texture on there. Yes. And it was... Cool. I know we, because we've gone through a lot of stuff. I know we saw a lot of cool Star Wars stuff on Sideshow New York Con, and I'm really excited that we got to take a look at this too. Uh, I know there's lots of cool stuff. Uh, I know I saw that in, in the chat somebody was asking, and I want to know too. Did you see that Cara Dune piece? Oh, um, I got to see that last day. What was really fun for me that they did is um, I was not allowed to go into the booth at any time before we went live. Correct. Yeah, same um, for me. So this wasn't a go in, check it out, and tell us about your favorite stuff. Um, and so I didn't know about that one. Um, and yeah. that was revealed, at least for me, on the last day of the con. It was fantastic. Um, yeah, the, I, I, I saw the, that. The portrait and the lifelike sculpture on that is amazing. I was watching the video for it. I wish I could have seen it. Yeah, uh, it's, 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 it's beautiful. IRL. Um, Man, that that looked so good. That And I just really, because I'm geeking out a bit on star wars i know that sideshow new york con is technically over but i'm still kind of like i have that con hangover where i just want to talk about <laughs> yeah so I apologize. 
apologize uh, for rolling that in there. I want to talk more about this jet trooper. No, not at all. Um, you talked about the the uh, striations or that or, or the line quality, and that's what um, was really neat in the in these particular troopers, and then um, accented with this jet trooper. Um, this type of armor is pretty darn unique. This isn't just uh, a color variation or anything like that. It really has a different quality um, to all of it, um, particularly in that line note. We talked about it on the back element uh, that we're used to seeing as the uh, cylinder there, but also done over on top of the side pauldrons. And these are a wider one we're used to seeing on a traditional stormtrooper. These are a little more toward the front um, and white. Um, mm. But they have a much bulkier um, that, again, those lines in the striation and then accented by the black undersuit, which also has that line work. And that's just such a fun uh, design element that you're getting those smooth, highly polished surfaces, surfaces and then getting into um, the textured surfaces. Um, on there. Even up on the shoulder pauldron here, you'll see that there are little lines that go around as well, which I thought were neat. Now that we've got that close up, thank you, Sam, for doing that. Uh, another thing I thought was neat is here, when you look at both on the hand and on the um, gauntlet there, is you've got the little blades, little slight movements, uh, and this guy's going to fly in a different direction. So. Um, it's really pretty neat it to is, have all the different airfoils. It, it is really cool, too, because I, I know that, you know, obviously this is uh, Rise of Skywalker. This is the way they, they have them in design. But, you know, for a lot of us, if you've been playing games and stuff like that, you've, you've experienced uh, jet troopers, and they are a bit of a nightmare to mm -hmm. have to deal with. Yes. So to see them finally show up and to see the intricacies of that armor and that design, I think is just absolutely fun. I love those little slight variations in the uh, foils. Yes. To add those in there into the armor to make it sort of, um, you know, to cut through air, to to change direction, stuff like that. I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I really dig on that. I thought that was a that was a fun uh, change in design. Working downward, we get into the uh, legs. And even on this, we have some changes on that. Um, you'll see that this is a little, a little uh, blockier, a little more angled uh, than we've had before. And instead of one, there we go, upward, and the one going downward. So we still have that, that traditional stormtrooper style where the you're kind of single kneecap uh, or knee pad piece. Uh, but there you go. There's the foils on the back. Yeah. So even the feet, which is very cool. And uh, speaking of these feet, are you ready for it, Let's Jeff? go for are it. Are you ready for it? It's time for Tread Wall. <laughs> I, I like it in the deep voice. Um, there on the tread, again, we have a uh, that hint of a um, bit of an athletic shoe with the wiggle uh, and rubberized uh, look of it. Most of the time, I think the guy's in yeah. the air. He doesn't have to worry about the, uh, the, the grip. Well, but... I think, I, I think that gription sort of aspect to it does make a lot of sense. In that, you know, if he's flying at a wall or something like that, he's going to want to have to, yeah, yeah. And yeah, stop or, you and know, get, on the, get on the landing, you don't want to have slick shoes. Uh, you, you're going to need a lot more uh, uh, runway, yeah. I guess, uh, with that one there. So uh, just a, it's just a fun and beautiful figure head to toe. Um, so now let's talk a little bit um, about our articulation points on there. Um, mm -hmm. You got the traditional head and because it sits up higher like this, um, he really gets a lot of fun, uh, you know, your straight down look. Uh, this is another one where his uh, field of vision there is just that thin, thin little line uh, versus yeah, the I, large kind I, of guidance. I wonder about that with that thin line and if it's not like one of those things like uh, like Vader where it actually creates it's like a, a kind of like a full visual, but it only looks as if it you can exactly. Yeah, it. I think there's a, I have a feeling that this particular helmet, if you wore it, uh, has a bit of up display. And there's um, no that 
there's no reason to ask this question, but I will ask it. Um, mm -hmm. The head stays on, right? There's no reason. like you um, It is ball jointed. Uh, there's no reason to remove it. There is no packaging underneath it um, as far as um, uh, thin plastic pieces or foam as far as a uh, protective during the packaging. Um, so it will arrive like this. Um, do not worry if uh, when you were posing the head or you moved it around, if it were to to come off, it is it is designed to yeah. do that as a traditional ball okay. jointed head. Um, Cassidy, uh, while I am while I am personally throwing questions at Guy, uh, how are we doing on the questions, comments, or concerns in the chats? Anything we need to address? Um, we are doing pretty good. We do have a quick question from JJ Joe on YouTube who wanted to know if the knee pad is swappable to the other knee. Hmm. Oh, you're um, I mean, okay. I, I see what you mean. Where I said that they're, you've got one knee pad. No, these are not going to be a swap out thing. They are all part of the armor. Um, let's show that now when I do the articulation of the knee. Uh, when we've talked about armored figures, you remember that you are slightly uh, more limited in them because that right there, the two pieces are now touching. So I'm not going to be going further than that. This is not those uh, soccer style field goal kicks that we've talked about. Um, but what I want you to see here is that this particular piece is all one piece. Okay, this is molded as one. So this particular uh, knee pad that you were talking about would not switch over onto this side. We're going to now do the same articulation there. Yeah. Okay, and you see that this one is different. But these are solid uh, pieces. Okay, as far as that goes. Uh, but since we're down here on the legs, we will talk about the articulation points. Um, of that. Um, you have the <laughs> roller ball joint of the foot giving you that. I would, like, I would like to add that it's just very funny that it looks like you're flying him around. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> yes, this is this is truly the the, the most uh, realistic uh, portrayal I've ever done here on the show. Yeah. Uh, it looks like... Whee! Uh, <laughs> um, uh, there's there's one I, I guess we could I could pose that to the guests. Do we think at any point when these guys do take flight that they 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 say we uh, as they as they take <laughs> off? So, um, but you have your uh, traditional roller ball joint on the foot. Now um, the covering over that with the fin and calf. This is all one piece. Okay, so these do yeah. not move independently. This is the articulation point that moves all right and that I, that it does make sense too like mm -hmm. anytime you have you know a trooper versus say for example like an iron man armor where the intricacies are very specific with troopers with their plastoid armor it's not going to be correct overly uh an overly intricate sense when you have yes million now with around. with that in mind this is not what we've seen on other kind of boot styles where you're going to get the cut um, right around the ankle and you're moving um, the uh, calf armor or calf piece on a boot uh, up and down as much. That's uh, not really on this one here. But now let's take a look at our hip joint as we move up there. Um, now you do have the undersuit which is going to give you a little bit of resistance. Okay. Um, when you're doing this I uh, always move in really small small amounts. Um, uh, some people pose a lot faster. I savor it and I tend to take almost a day uh, to pose and because I, I'm a little, uh, I'm, a, I'm a bit particular, but I also want to uh, make sure that I'm giving myself all the options. I don't think anybody who's a regular watcher of the show is even remotely surprised that yeah. you might take a while to pose. And shout out to master poser Terry Smith as well, who has given all of us at Sideshow a lot of uh, hints, tips, and tricks. It, it, if you um, if you're not if you're not watching those or if you haven't seen them, Terry's videos are spectacular. The ones I always reference, um, particularly on a figure that I may have, uh, I always go back to it. Um, What's great about when he's doing that is showing you um, poses the figure can do, or you may wonder, oh, could I do such? And he will also tell you, well, that's a little harder to do or not quite. Um, and that's a great thing. And I thank Terry a lot for that. I also think um, his introduction uh, to posing videos are another great one. Um, so um, with our articulation, let's take a look at that. I'm going to spin it around um, and have Sam give us a close up here. Okay where you have the pouches here on the side, okay, 
there you have your armor and that up angle there. I want it to show that you're only going to go so far before they're going to touch. So this is about as far as you are but, going to want to I go mean, on that. The good thing about this is we do this pose often, but it's very rare that we ever would need to test the, the sort of split leg. Right. This is not really something that you would do, but no. um, we do want to tell you what the what they are. We're not going to get into specific poses uh, per show, but um, we do want to tell you what those are. These sides do have a bit of flex in them, but not enough to really be pushing that. And again, that's something you're not going to want to do because you're not going to want to scratch your figure. I mean, if I was posing a, a jet trooper, I would definitely, if I was doing a flying or landing, it would definitely be like kind of a, a legs more forward than it would be to the side. Um, to the side, yeah. yeah. Um, well, since you bring that up, let's talk about the forward and backward on there. See what I did there? Yeah, I love it. I love that you're doing Thank you. You're walking me through this, and I like it. Um, so let's take a look there. That is about the extent of our front. And again, remember, I'm being cautious to where I'm going to have the armor touch. Once it gets to where it would touch, I stop. I'm not going to push it further to that. Um, it's probably not designed that way. Also, I'm risking uh, scratching or damaging this wonderful uh, armor that I like in that, in that color. Now, the backward range motion. Not incredibly far, but again, doesn't need to be. Okay, but you've got it about yay. All right, let's talk about our waist articulation. This is always important. This is all locked together. This is all one piece, okay? This is not like some of the other troopers where um, right around the belt area, it'll twist and turn. It doesn't do that, okay? So this is all one solid piece. So you're not gonna get a trunk twists. Uh, and you're not getting um, your old-timey stretches. You don't need to. You're flying around. No, no need to stretch, um, apparently, uh, yeah. with that one there. Um, it's one of the first times that, that Jeff, that uh, we don't have an old-timey stretchy fig. Um, <laughs> but there, As well, we shouldn't in this situation. There, there is a unique uh, little point here. When you take the figure out of the box, underneath the chest piece here is gonna be two little pieces of foam that protect that because this actually is an articulated area. So when I move, yeah. you see that it opens a little further. And I do when I have it go forward. It's a smaller range of motion on that, but it is one that you have, okay? So if you wanna kinda of do a bit of an arch. Now we're gonna go up onto the arm. These shoulder pauldrons do have the elastic underneath that you see there, which allows me to lift those a little bit yeah yeah we I, you know what's funny is is um i i'm a man who, who i i pride myself on my vocabulary you introduced me to the word pauldrons and i use it way more than i think i should i i think the other one i remember you being excited about was in one of our figures um i want to say it was red skull with the epaulets which were the yeah uh, <laughs> so yeah. these are terms i'm sure you use on a daily basis yeah, so so those pauldrons, like a lot of the troopers that we have seen, have that elastic. Have that elastic, so give that a slight lift, gentle lift, mm -hmm. when you're going upward, okay? Um, and now, let's talk a little bit about your forearm. This particular one is one that you can move, and the reason that's important is when you're going to want to get a full bend, you want to go and move it to where your uh, articulation point is, and then bend. I'm giving myself a little bit more room to move it. Okay. Yeah. So when I move that, so do not be concerned when you say, uh oh, that's not, that is supposed to be able to move wherever you need to, uh, to do it. Okay. The, yeah. And it'll hold in the pose. It'll like when hold you're in the pose. Yes. Um, this, this section here is attached on there. Okay, the armor isn't really a removable, but when you do swap out the hands, if this does um, come down, know mm -hmm. that that's okay. That is that is a design um, on the figure, okay? Um, as far as the rest of the removable um, uh, deal is uh, there's no other parts that are removable. This is not a pack that you uh, lift off 
or other. Um, now that I've got it that way, I am going to, uh, the neck also has an articulation joint there, so if you saw from the side there that I can kind of lean forward, and I'm going to do that because I'm going to over bend it, and you can see the air intake. Another neat design. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So I think that is really fun on that one. And then, of course, you do have, with that shoulder, you do have the ability to go side to side. I'm going to move the figure off to the side. I'm going to pull out the accessories and the dynamic stand base for this particular okay. one. And um, Cassidy, I will answer uh, questions if there are any at the moment. Um, as far as question goes, um, I mean, we did have some questions about like posing it in a flying position with the base, but I feel like we will go over that. Um, I also got um, some some information from someone in the chats about that logo that we were talking about earlier from Mike Keen on the Let Your Geek Sideshow Facebook group. He let me know that the, um, the logo is kind of like an homage to... Um, Ralph McQuarrie's original snow trooper design. He showed me on the D23 like blog uh, Star Wars site. Um, and I love that. Yeah. I, I love super I, cool. I, th I think we all, you know, there's been, um, I think since, uh, s since Disney sort of um, got Lucasfilm and everything, I've noticed a massive uptick in Ralph McQuarrie love. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you know, we saw a lot of it in Rogue One. We saw like Vader's castle and things like that that Macquarie had designed. We see a lot of it in Rebels, in Star Wars Rebels with the character design and sort of that nod here in Rise of Skywalker. Uh, I am I love that piece of information. So shout out to is it Mike in the chat that said that? Yes, yes. Uh, shout out to Mike uh, for having that. And while this is going on, uh, I'm going to say that for those of us who are uh, just joining us, we are looking at two figures today. Obviously, we've only seen one so far. We're going to get to another one, the Jet Trooper six-scale figure and the Sith Jet Trooper from Hot Toys. And that's what you see Guy has right there. And don't forget, if you like what you're seeing, which you do, right? Is that right? I do. Guys, I was asking you, but okay, that's I what I was going to very much. Okay. Because here's the thing here. I know I'm liking what I'm seeing. Uh, <laughs> don't forget to subscribe and hit the notifications bell on our YouTube channel so you won't miss any of our content. We have loads of giveaways and events going on all the time. So follow us on our social channels like at Collect Sideshow on Twitter and at Sideshow Collectibles on Instagram to keep an eye on those. And speaking of content, we've got some good stuff coming this week because tomorrow we are back with one of my favorite shows, Joshy G's Get Super, featuring actor and stunt performer Tate Fletcher. You can catch that premiere on YouTube at 10 a.m. If you've never seen Get Super, it's a combination of interview and a short and cool workout. I know I do them. I know, Guy, you've been doing them. Hopefully, Cassidy, you're going to be doing them too. We're all going to get ripped. Uh, and of course, as always, if you like comic books, then you'll need to check out our weekly show, The Comics Hall with Amy and Paul. The show airs weekly at 4 p.m. on Wednesday, which is new comic book day for all you geeks. And it is live on all of our social channels. And if you prefer podcast form or can't make it live, then you can catch the show on Thursdays on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. And Cassidy is going to be dropping links to that right about now. She's doing it right now. Now, Guy... All sure. right, let's get her some armaments. Get some accessories, bro. <laughs> All right. Now, our Sith Trooper comes with two blasters. We have the large cannon one. I just, I, I love how large this thing is, uh, the suppressor. Um, you get that bright red, the matte black, and the hints of silver in this. Mm -hmm. The other neat part is that your handle does drop. So if you want to pose the figure holding it two hands. Use the scaled hands, not mine, uh, to do that. Do you have... That looks like a punishing weapon. It is. Uh, it's, it's one of my favorites. And then we have his larger blaster here. Again, with those hints of that red, the matte black and silver, this one here, the stock, does extend out a little bit as well. Uh, which is pretty darn fun uh, with those. And then we have our five hands. You're going to have your right and left fist, right and left trigger, and an opened expressive left hand, like so. You can get all sorts of stuff done. Mm -hmm. And there's that texture 
underneath where it we've talked about it having kind of that work glove look with the the yeah. uh, pads on the palm uh, and nice like gloss protection. leather. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, if you're firing a, if you're firing a blast tech, exactly. On those these babies tend to heat up. <laughs> the other uh, thing that is going to come with is a dynamic flight stand, which you are going to want to use. Um, so that is the stand right here. Okay, um, it's going to have the large wire. Uh, for those, this is a stand style that you've seen before, but we're just going to go over it. You're going to have the cap on the top that you remove. Down on the base, make sure that you give that a little twist. Okay, um, this screws down into it. And, and just to have it tight so when you are doing your poses and you get it where it is that it will not spin around. Plug that into the base. Here on your clip, you're going to have a small screwdriver you're going to, or a small screw that you're going to loosen. Um, I have my screwdriver ready to go. We'll loosen that up and slide down over. And you'll put it to a height that uh, you want to use it at. And then once you've done that, you will then uh, put the cap back on. All right. So give me a now moment I, here to do that. I'm going to guess if I, because I, I, I kind of make these sort of, uh, I make these guesses sometimes when we're watching it. I'm mm -hmm. going to assume that a lot of people are going to pose these in in flight poses. Yes. Um, I would say, of course, everybody does. You know, there's always people that do classic museum poses mm -hmm. which is great we love those they're they're fantastic they keep the figure nice nice and tight but i feel like a lot of people are going to be having kind of a coming down with the guns and the i believe that's that's one that people are going to want to do so i'm going to move this uh onto the turntable to show that off and that does have uh the base kind of has that reminiscent of the sith destroyers we saw at the end like what would be the flooring uh, from that, uh, obviously, because I said there's the screw in the pole, you can adjust that to wherever you like as far as the height on the dynamic stand that you want to do. And there is foam pad on both the support lower and on the interior when you open and close it. Okay, that's to protect the figure as well. Um, I am going to do it uh, uh, here on the turntable to show you. Um, when you do it, take side and it's going to go up and around the waist right about there. You want to make sure that you don't go underneath the two pads here or knock anything Wait, off like so. Do you have him like a millimeter off the ground? Uh, I just now realized I did that, so I am going to uh, to lift that. I up. was like, what a, what an intimidating trooper he will be. You know, this, the, okay, this, this, for all you know, this is his first day. He is in flight class and it's uh, okay. I need everybody to hover. I'm not sure. Yep. And then up to the ground. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Whatever, whatever spell they cast to hover. Exactly. So, uh, going to loosen the screw. And yeah, Jeff, it's, uh, thank you for bringing it up that, uh, you know, you can obviously adjust it to whatever height that you'd like. Um, I'm going to have him in the stand. Um, the higher up you go on there, obviously make sure you're holding your figure when you're doing your dynamic stand. I hold the stand and the base and then do my movements as such because you want to make sure your figure is balanced. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's, I a, would that's say, an odd to I the know. side pose, but again, yeah, I, make sure guy, you I would say, I would say, uh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt there. I would say um, that even though, you know, we don't officially make suggestions for people on how to pose, I have a feeling that most of us are going to be holding that dynamic stand all the way to the top yes. um, to do that. So that gives us a lot more motion and movement and the, the sort of vibe of flying that you see there. Mm -hmm. So that's what's neat about the dynamic stands is the um, the ability to do a lot. And and uh, I've seen in in um, some of the fan photos that are, are submitted at, or people have done and, and the way that they can be used uh, is really great. Well, we're gonna put our guy back in there. Um, he was so excited to fly. 
Well, that was an example of what you were saying earlier about making sure you hold on to the figure. Yes, hold on well. to the figure as you do it. Okay. No, obviously, yeah. if I'm, you know, I'm what I'm doing is moving that center and the weight there. I'm going to kind of put yeah. him a little bit forward. We're just going to kind of do some basics on here, uh, but we can ask, answer any questions because he does have a friend I'd like to uh, introduce you to in just a moment as well. Look at that. Cassidy, how are we doing in the questions, comments, or concerns in the comments? We got anything? Well, it seems like guys... Uh... Um, it looks like we are all good at the moment. We are good. Like well... Uh, yeah. In that case, I mean, you know, we did say this is a kind of a twin episode here, so if you wanted to, and like, I think by law you have to at this point yes. now, because we've committed... Um, I'm going to need you to break out that um, his friend. The jet trooper, yeah. The, how, how would we refer Jet Trooper Classic? How would we? Uh, how uh, would we say that? Um, I'm going to say first appearance because this is the one that we see uh, first on the planet where someone says they fly now. Um, we see them in the white. Yeah. It's toward the end of the film um, that we see the the uh, Sith variant um, of them. So I'm going to move our Sith over to the side along with his unique little finned hands. Okay, let's take a look at the box. Let's. Art for this one here. Again, that classic, but th this time obviously showcasing the uh, white armor on that. The cigar band around, the multiple shots of the figure, then on the back, now, I, dynamic my, flight. My brain Guy, my brain is such that uh, I have already forgotten what the Sith Trooper box looks like. Are these um, sort of parallel in that regard? Or do we have... Let me show you. I'm going to pull that up there. Sure. Oh, okay. it looks... Uh... So, let's see if I can hold them next to each other and if Sam can get us a shot. So, these are your two. You'll notice our classic color white has a much different blaster. We're going to look at that specifically. Yeah, oh, yeah, that um, makes sense. They they do they do come with different accessories. Mm -hmm. So yep. In okay. A, in uh, in a moment, but they both have that wrap around. Yeah. So question answered. Thank you, guys. Okay. Yeah. Um, back to the box of our classic. We are going to spin that around, and you see that we have in-flight photos of the figures uh, again with that. Yeah. This triple cannon uh, <laughs> blaster, um, which is pretty darn intense. I, uh, I really like the sort of implied motion of the two figure, um, yeah, sort of vi visualization there, and then the desert background. Mm -hmm. Now that's showing right there on the uh, on the base of the one that's uh, in the foreground here. You can, I have a feeling that that's going to be a very similar style of pose that people are going to use. Is you're, you're going to have very slight bends in the leg, but use that dynamic stand to get them up and off the ground uh, with that one there. Um, again, this is the shoebox style. Lifts up. And then we have another photograph on the inside. What I think is so fun about this helmet, I'm, and I'm just going to say it through the photograph, is that it almost bug-like praying mantis-esque um, quality with the way in which uh, the uh, the little guy is down here. And we're going to see that again when I pull up the figure itself. So, um, so this yeah. is our box art that we're going to have on here. Uh, when you slide this up and out, you're going to have the same type of packaging. The hands will be the same on this white classic one as well. Uh, the difference is that it has the single uh, blaster. Um, up here, and we're going to show that because I have already, um, right beforehand, taken him out today. Boom! So here he is in that bright white. Yeah. All right. Again, used a basic uh, dynamic, but anytime you're going to kind of bend the, the knees and the feet. Yeah. Um, on that, um, we will take a Look here, um, Sam, if you can give me a bit of a close-up on the uh, boots there. What's fun is that on this one here, we do have that high polished white, but like a classic Stormtrooper, we have that leather-esque look on, on the boot itself. 
Yeah, always good to see that. And I always look at this. An airborne, our first airborne. Look at that. Okay. Um, notice the feet on this one have that hint of dark, almost as though it's been on sand. Like I said, we talked about the first appearance when we first see them. Whereas yeah. our Sith guys, we see in an airborne battle yeah. on a ship. So there would be no dust and dirt. I forgot to yell, Treadwatch. <laughs> that is my bad. I dropped the ball on that one. Um, but yeah, the, it is It is really cool because it would have been easy for them to do a simple palette swap. Mm -hmm. We all we all agree. I, you know, I don't think anybody here doesn't think that Hot Toys doesn't knock it out of the park with with quality. Um, but by not just doing a simple palette swap, but by also adding the little details between like one would be standing in a desert planet situation and then mm -hmm. one would be standing on a Star Destroyer. Yeah. So see how we get that hint even up onto the calf there. Um, and I'm going to pull uh, we're going to uh, 360 this guy here, but I want to show off um really the big difference of the shoes. This having that leather, the other having a very high polished leather, but also having um, the uh, striation piece that goes up over top of the figure. Okay. Um, wow, this looks so neat. Okay, there's his can hmm. on the front there. There's that praying mantis kind of, it almost, you know, has a hint of a little mouth and little mandibles. Uh, yeah. On that, I, I, I like this design a lot. I like this design a lot. On the back, we get that three triangle, but this one here, uh, kind of pops with the white there. All right. Yeah, they do. They both. They both. That that triangle design, the the Macquarie design, as we were mm -hmm. told. So. Um, shout out to Mike in the chat. Uh, really does pop differently, but mm -hmm. really well on either of these. Yes. Okay, now there, thank you, Sam. There is a view of our blaster. Okay, this in the bright white and the matte black hints of silver in the front, the triple red. I am going to take it out of, this, uh, of his hand and, and show it to you uh, on its own in a moment. And then I want both figures to stand next to each other. Uh, as yeah. well off the stand. Now, normally when we sort of do an unseal and reveal on one of these pieces, we we do like a full flexibility thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, you had told me before we started filming that the flexibility is the same. Yes, these figures will be the same. Um, the difference in these is uh, color and accessories. And then I'm also going to show you, like I said, the feet are a little bit different as well. But as far as your posability and your points of articulation, those are going to remain the same on both of the colors yeah I, we'd end up with a two-hour episode yes if that were now not that i don't you know play with toys for at least two hours daily um <laughs> you know, some people work out for that long um i i play with the toys for that long all and right if i'm gonna if you're G, you do both exactly i'm gonna put uh his feet down and take him off the dynamic stand i'm gonna just show off the dynamic stand that the stand itself is also the same okay this is an identical one as well with that starbase texture and then on the front name plate this one here is going to say jet trooper and the other was going to say sith jet trooper okay if you get both make sure you keep them on the correct stand <laughs> well, that was embarrassing to all the yeah, other embarrassing toys. when your friends come over and you go to show off your toys and uh they're incorrectly labeled um how that would be. All right, so here he is just standing up. This is, uh, you know, as we said, most people will probably have him in a flight, um, but he does have a great look uh, there. Uh, I'm gonna take the blaster out of his hands because I do wanna show the blaster on its own. Yeah, that thing is intimidating looking. It, 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 it's that, you said it's a triple blaster? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, the, I'd have to look to see if three beams come out of it when they're firing, because I did rewatch the film again, obviously, to see them both in action. Um, it does have that drop-down front handle. Okay. Very secure when you want to do your two-hand poses. That's one of, the interesting, one of the interesting things that they did when... when and they sort of brought the First Order in versus the Empires. The Empire had the sort of like the all-black mm -hmm. kind of vibe, all the blasters. And in here, the First Order 
like they have in the same way that like the helmets had that additional black on the on the eyes and everything like that and the movement and motion um by adding that sort of white highlighting to the weapons i think it makes it look pretty rad yeah um so um there's the scope on the side now i'm not sure you've got three things blasting all at once do you uh, how often is he looking down in the uh barrel of the scope but it is on there um which is kind of fun that <laughs> seems like a lot of power to have um but i like this design and this is unique to um, the traditional one uh, what i want to do now is set the true troopers next to one another put them here on our stand you can see them next to one another and then the shot that I'm hoping uh, Sam can do there is at the boots. Uh, we talked a little about uh, the traditional trooper has that white uh, with a hint of dust and dirt. The uh, Sith having the high red polish. This has the more leather look. This has the red leather, but it also has the bit that comes over top. So Jeff, you kind of see the... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, the Sith just dressed a little bit more to the nines. You know, yeah, like I said earlier, it, it would have been easy. They could just palette swap it, yep. you know, and just be like, we're done. You know, there yeah, it is. Done. But those tiny details, I think, really make that great, especially if you are a Star Wars Hot Toys collector and you are going to get both. I think there's something very satisfying about having that happen. And it also gives you like little things if you say for example we're only going to get one of these right um each one has its uh has its benefits yeah each each has its own unique qualities there again i i that that to me is very impressive uh we just talked about that uh you said that that you know you could have easily just gone well the color is the only difference it's not um there are there are uh little little hints like that that i think are great um I will uh, fly them again. Uh, Cass, do we have any questions on either the Sith or the, um, what we'll call our classic white? Um, yes, we do actually have a few. Um, I have three right now, but they are very quick. Um, the first one, Matt on Facebook wants to know, does the jetpack affect how high up you can place the figure on the dynamic stand? Okay, uh, let's, uh, let's first take a look at that uh, and discuss that. All right, um, Sam, can you give me a close shot of where the dynamic stand is uh, on the pack. There. Okay, this is really, and I'm gonna lift the arms here to show it. This is really about the only place that you're placing that, okay? Um, you do not wanna take the, um, what I'll call the waist cinch. You do not wanna have that underneath here, around there. You'll also see that the three kind of little um, white uh, cylinders on the back will lay right above the dynamic stand. So when you talked about the height, does it matter where on the figure? Um, yes, this is where it's going to lay on the figure. But right here, uh, you're going to loosen that screw and you can adjust the height of where it is on the dynamic stand if you wanted to go all the way up to the top. Um, as Jeff and I spoke about it earlier, uh, obviously the higher up you go, please make sure that you're holding on to the figure um, and the base when you're kind of doing those movements. I would hate for you to have it, you know, fall forward or uh, knock off the shelf. Make sure that you've uh, got a good balance on there. All right. Um, hopefully that, that answered answer, that. God, that was a great answer. <laughs> yeah, I think that covered it. Oh, um, good. Another Quick you know what, guy? Don't go. I was going to say. You know what, guy? You have you have my permission. Take that toy when you leave. You can just take it. Oh <laughs> yes, I will fly answer. out of here with it. Sorry. I'm sure the producers will love that. Yes, and now someone is standing at the door. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, back to that. Cass. Back to that height there, Cass. Um, there it is, all the way at its maximum up level. So. Um, Obviously, I've given a bit of bend in the stand, but you're going to get this guy a couple inches, uh, particularly if you're going to bend the uh, knees, which I think you will. You're going to uh, get him quite a bit off the ground. Perfect. And that um, transitions really well into our next question, which was um, how tall do you think it is when it's displayed in flight? Just ballpark. Estimate. Oh, OK. Uh, in flight. Here we go. In flight off the stand, we've got a 12-inch figure. 
Um, I I'd have say, him at well, okay. I got a twelve inch probably figure. What, um, pr probably fourteen to sixteen inches. I'm guessing. That's what I was figure uh, the extension of the post. Um, I'm going to say about two and a half that to three. So you're going to look at um, uh, if you're looking for inside. This question may be based on um, putting it inside of a display case. You want to have 15 inches of clearance on your shelf. OK, good answer. And also, if you're going to like lean him back and stuff to make sure you make account, you account for that. Exactly. Well. Yeah. I, uh, this is fun. Uh, you know, the dynamic stands, if it's not one that you're uh, used to, I don't want, you know, they, they can be a little bit intimidating, but it is one of those things, like I said, hold the base and then you hold the stand and kind of get Guy, it where you need. I'm going to do, I'm going to do a quick request personally. Mm -hmm. Um, if could you pers could you do one where there's one flying each of them are flying with with the the their blasters in hand oh okay uh yes let me try and do that real quickly um i know i, I know i'm asking a lot of you and especially to make you real quickly do something nope that's um, that's uh that's that's all right if uh jeff you need to give anybody information or if we need to drop uh the how to order codes or or anything like that with uh this while we do it um well, I mean, Cassidy wants to drop a link uh, to I mean, this she piece. she wants to. Yeah, more than welcome to. I know she <laughs> does. Uh, I know she's doing that. And uh, I will ask Cassidy, Did did uh, how's everybody's day going in the chats? Everybody having fun in there? Oh, yeah. They, I think they're all having fun. Um, while you're posing those guys, there was one, um, you know, question to be settled as well, um, mm -hmm. an argument to be settled from Copper on YouTube. He wanted to know if you're going to be displaying them with both guns or just one. Ah, okay. Um, that is a question based on do I get the Sith one and will he have both? <laughs> um, for purposes of this display that uh, Jeff has asked me to do right now, I will be using a uh, single. But when I do pose uh, figures at home, I, uh, I am not uh, exaggerating when I say I will usually take the day. I'll play with him for, oh, a couple of hours trying to figure out exactly what I want. And then I'll go back a few hours later and completely change it out. And I'll uh, rewatch a film or I'll look at a frame of a comic uh, and, and want to do it uh, different. So I can say with him, I will probably be doing it both ways um, yeah. with an individual blast. And then again, uh, probably with uh, with both. So. Yeah, how about you, Wyatt Earp, having him coming down? Yeah, you know, um, he's, you know, I mean, it's not intimidating enough that the guy is flying through the air. But, oh, uh, by the way, he also has two really big guns uh, going yeah. as well, you know, because uh, cause he's not intimidating enough. Yeah, I figured, I figured that because this is sort of like a twin episode and we are clearly winding down at this point in time, I did want them side by side in the pose similar to what I think many people might want to do so they can get the visualization of that. All right. Now that's real quick. I'm not played with the dynamic stands. I'm just kind of doing the feet up and over and making sure that they are balanced. But I did want you to see um, said weaponry in yeah. here as well. Um, this is one I'm sure that when uh, Terry gets his hands on these uh, and poses is going to show that even the smallest little uh, movements Absolutely. on these guys is really going to bring a lot of life uh, to them uh, as far as creating flight. Nice. Yeah. I like that. So Cassidy, uh, it looks like uh, we have gotten to that point in time now uh, where we are sort of starting to wrap up our Hot Toys six scale uh, Sith Jet Trooper as well as Jet Trooper uh, pieces right here. Anything in the questions, comments, or concerns? We we have got it. We've covered it. Well, guy, oh, that's you nailed the conversation. I got to be honest, guy. I was like, oh, this might be a longer episode because we've got two pieces, but you have streamlined this so well, guy. You well, really you. Uh, got out of the park. So that being said, um, everybody, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, you have been an absolutely amazing audience, uh, guy. You've been amazing. Oh, thank you, Jeff. Cassidy, you've been amazing. Yes. I was fine. <laughs> um, 
that being said, if you're interested in any of our giveaways, uh, then you need to check out our Sideshow Art Prints social channels right now. I know I'm a big follower of them. Every Thursday, they preview a new art print before it pre-orders, and they give away one copy in celebration. Um, sadly, I can't win them, but you can. Uh, and this week, they are giving away Dave Wilkins' incredible Wolverine versus Blade fine art print. I absolutely love this piece. It is so good, so much fun. Um, so you're going to want to check that out. Uh, of course, don't forget to check out all the amazing things we've got coming on. We've got Get Super. We've got the Comics Hall. Uh, now, thank you all for hanging out with us, and we'll see you next Monday, October 19th at 10 a.m. Pacific for another episode of Unsealed and Revealed, and that's going to be just before Spooktacular starts. Now, thank you all for watching, and don't forget, let your geek side show. Bye. Bye.